Hey there fellow travelers, Mark here with Walter's World, and today we're in Cotor, Montenegro. And the thing is, this is a really popular place for cruise ships to stop in for two to five hours. It's kind of a usual overlap here in Kotor. So, but what I thought I'd do is give kind of, if you're going to be coming here, some things you should know before you come to Kotor and how to enjoy it when you are here. So let's get started. The first thing you want to do when you are here is you want to explore the old town. There's a lot of really great churches. If you like, you know, the Orthodox Church, you got the old St. Luke Church, which is this little tiny small Orthodox Church you go in the iconography is really nice and right next to it is a much larger church St. Nicholas Church and that's from the 20th century the other one's from the 12th century so it's a little bit newer but it does have the icons inside and that's pretty cool um, also the other big church you want to check out is here I'm actually on the uh, on the balcony here at St. Typhon's Cathedral um, and it is really cool to go through they have a nice little museum to go along with it with the vestments and some artwork as well so that's kind of cool but the thing you really want to do is just kind of wander around the old town because it is really pretty with the stone buildings and the works you know you got the city hall and other things you can check out when you are here and there are a few museums you go through i went through the maritime museum it's got a collection of old-fashioned boats and, and a lot of you know kind of artwork about sailing it has you know miniatures it has a lot of explanation of things going on some of it's in english as well so that's nice and that's kind of like the main like historic museum when you are here but that's the thing though is when you come to kotar you're just kind of exploring and wandering around and, and you just wander through these tiny little alleys and stuff like that and sit down and have some food and things so it's kind of a nice laid back little you know bay town so that is very nice the second thing you want to do when you come here is go walk on the ramparts or go walk on the city walls because it is a fortified city so you can walk on the walls and that's pretty cool which leads into the third thing is when you walk up those walls you can actually keep walking up and walking up and walking up all the way up those like little fjord like hills up on the side and you'll see that there's a church halfway up and it's called you know our lady of health or however you want to say it but it is a pretty tough hike to get up there and then you can go even farther to go to st john's like castle or fortress whatever you want to say it's just a tiny little castle up on the top but it gives you great views of the bay of kotar which is really i mean it is really gorgeous like people say you got to go take a boat trip and stuff like that you really should when you are here it is amazing now i will say if you're going to go walk all the way to the top make sure you leave you know with at least two or three hours till your boat leaves because you know they'll say oh it takes an hour and a half to do the walk man it is a tough walk so if you don't have a lot of time i do not recommend trying to do it because you might miss your boat and you don't want your boat to leave without you okay now next thing i want to tell you to do here is if you've got the time take one of the little boats out from the port and have them take you out to the little islands in the middle of the bay look there's there's two cute islands but the one you really want to check out is the the bay of rocks or the lady the island of lady of the rocks and basically this is an island that was man-made they started putting rocks there and sinking ships with rocks in them and stuff like that to build this island and now there's this cute church on top of it and there's another island right by it with another church and that's where a lot of like people would pray that oh, we hope our family members come back safely from travels and stuff like that or sailing and things like that and you go there and you can still see the icons that are there you can see the tributes that people have that is there there's nice artwork and stuff like that but you will be having to take a little boat to go out there. Now, if you're on a cruise ship, you'll probably go buy it anyway. I mean, you will go buy it because you have to, but uh, it is something cool that you can actually rent a boat and have you take out there. It is really, really nice. Now, the fourth thing I want to talk about is eating. Now, you'll see there's a lot of restaurants here, but the difference between, I think, Kotor and Dubrovnik is Dubrovnik, it just is right up the way, um, Dubrovnik is all restaurants and souvenir shops. Here in Kotor, yes, there's a lot of restaurants and bars, but there's also normal stores, so you can get like normal clothing. And my mom wanted to tell you, because she was here and really enjoyed Kotor, and she said, look, tell them there's actually some decent shopping here too. So that's nice, but also there's a lot of really nice restaurants you can go and sit out, because there's a lot of squares around town you can go and sit and enjoy. And so that's one thing I do recommend. And the thing is, when you're here, obviously we're right off the Adriatic, we're in the bay here. You've got a lot of really good seafood that's here, so maybe sea bass or bream or whatever, and, and or, or you might have calamari or I mean I had great prawns or shrimp you have these like fish dishes that are really good but also you have a lot of pasta dishes because the Italian influence and you'll see a crazy number of pizzerias but also you can get like a meat plate here with a lot of different local meats and stuff and how they prepare it which I, I actually really like I had that today for lunch but also when you're looking what to drink when you're here yeah the local beer is fine but you want to have Montenegro wine that's kind of like especially of the country so definitely have some of that now the thing is when you do go out to eat here you do tip in Montenegro you tip about 10% on on top of the bill so you have that even if they have a service charge you tip 10% 
Price are pretty low here, so you're not gonna be really that upset with it, so it's not a big deal. But you tip 10%. Also, here in Montenegro, they use the Euro. They're not part of the Eurozone, they're not part of the European Union either, but they do use the Euro, okay? So when you go to the ATMs here, it spits out Euros. And if you're on a cruise ship that tips in Euros, and maybe you're focusing on a Croatia tour, and so you're having a tough time getting Euros to tip your crew, this can be a place to pick up some of those Euros for tips on your cruise ship. So that is nice, but you can pay every you're hearing Euros everywhere because that's the currency, okay? Now you also might be wondering is when I'm here, what language do they speak? But there's so many tours that come through here you'll have a lot of English and Russian spoken no problem there menus in lots of languages so it's very easy for non-Serbian speakers i.e. the cruise ship people that come floating through here it's very very simple um, I will say though a few of the safety things I would worry about when you do come here to Kotor one it does get very warm here and the sun is very hot and if you're going to be taking that hike all the way up to St. John's man that sun is going to be down on you and it can be very exhausting so do be careful take water with you when you go up there make sure you wear your sunblock I put my 70 sunblock on before I came that's another thing um, also the the pavers on the streets here can be very slick when it rains so you do want to be careful with that so just just be sure-footed like if you see some stuff spilled obviously don't step in it because it can be pretty slick so that that's about all I really had to say about safety though my cruise ship people did say watch out for pickpockets here they didn't say anything about that in Dubrovnik but they mentioned that here I haven't really seen anything that made me think that but that's one thing that the cruise lines really was kind of pushing towards us when we did do that okay last thing I want to say is if you're not going to be on a cruise ship if you're going to be coming here from Dubrovnik for a day trip it's about a three hour drive to get here depending on the border crossing in the summer July and August it can be pretty busy but you still get through relatively quickly so it's not a big idea but if you're going to do that day trip from Dubrovnik since it's three hours you want to start early in the morning so you can get here and enjoy the city have a nice lunch and all kinds of stuff see the museums and see the the churches and things like that hike up to the top because you're on a day trip on your own with a car you can actually you have the time to go up there because the views are great okay another the thing is when you do come in if you do take that boat tour out to the islands just look around because the fjords here are just gorgeous with a I mean, it literally just comes straight down into the, into the bay and it is really beautiful anyway uh, if you want to learn more about visiting montenegro or visiting croatia the Dalmatian coast things like that please check us out on our website at waltersworld.com we're also on twitter facebook instagram youtube and we really appreciate your likes subscriptions and if you have some more advice for here in kotor please put it in the comment section below so we can help more travelers cruise travelers or noble overnight travelers and things like that because this really is a gorgeous town and i do recommend visiting it it is very small but it is so quaint and well worth it so i'll say bye from kotor